behind you. Thank you so much. Yeah. What's been going on with you since we last interviewed you and had it lousy equipment? Oh, you know what? Um, not, not much, you know, just trying to stay, stay active and whatnot. How about you? How you been? Good. Um, you're like number 271. There we go. I've been cranking out the interviews. It keeps me positive to find out what you guys are up to and let you talk and let my fans fall in love with you. Look at you. Yeah, you're doing a great job. It's been really amazing to watch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amazon delivered this to me today when I was taking a nap. Oh, really? Look at that. Look at this. Jeff Capri says, you need a microphone. So uh, he's a Vegas comic. And I said, oh, well, okay. So I ordered one. And a side note, if you have trouble getting a package, take a nap. They'll be sure to wake you. Oh, there you go. So are your two adorable children in the room by you? They are. They actually are. Did you just get that chat I sent you? No. Okay, I was wondering if you could grant me the permission to record it. I did get that. So let me see. I hit more. Yep. And I say allow record. Yep. And I click. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Now there's no way that even if I lose it, you'll have, I should have everybody do this for me. <laughs> there you go. Have the backup. Yeah. Everybody needs a backup plan. Even the Pointer sisters. Uh, yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they were their own. Right? <laughs> uh, my girls are here. They're just hanging out. They want to rough let, Do you let them be on camera or not? They, they can be if they want to come say hi. What are their names? Um, the older one, her name is Vivaldi, like Antonio Vivaldi, the composer. Hi, Vivaldi. Is that you? Yes. Hi, yeah. you're beautiful. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Yeah. Are you like in high school, almost? Uh, I'm actually gonna be going to the eighth. Yeah, she's going to eighth grade. She's nice and tall and lean. Are you into sports? Yes, I actually do like sports. Track? Uh, no more basketball. Oh, cool. What position do you play? I actually don't. I'm actually not on a basketball team, but like I'm more. I'm more into like basketball. Yes. Shooting. Yeah, <laughs> she likes to take the shots. Yeah. Are you going to say hi, Tom? That's so cool. Nice to meet you, Vivaldi. Who's nice. this? This is Kali Dasa. Kali Das. Yeah, Dasa. Kali Dasa. Uh -huh. Kali Dasa. I love your name, Kali Dasa. Yeah. What's it mean in my language? <laughs> It means, it means servant of Kali. It's an Indian poet. How beautiful. Yeah, she got the girls named after artists. Wow. And Vivaldi was an artist too, uh, like painting? Classical, yeah, classical music composer. Oh, I was close. Yeah, he did the Four Seasons. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, so do your, your children are being brought up to understand and respect your heritage? Uh, yeah, well, uh, the Indian, uh, yeah, well, definitely. Um, the Indian name, it's just an Indian uh, poet, but um, I just want them to, I don't know, love art. You know, I, I love art myself and it's a big part of my life. So clearly. I what type of art do you get into besides performing comedy? Um, I do like literary art. I also enjoy painting. Um, 
I'm a sculptor. Like I, I know how to, I've made a lot of different creations out of paper mache, clay, whatever. So I do enjoy the creative side of life. Do you have any of that where people can look at it and try to see if they want to buy? You know, that's funny that you say that. I, I have not posted any of my work up for sale. Um, I did sell a Virgin Mary uh, paper mache sculpture once for $500. So that was... Uh, you got to have some talent. You know what? It was it was just the right moment, right market. So it was good. But um, like this, I painted this. It's gorgeous. But it's not, um, it's not finished yet. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I just started it maybe eight years ago and I haven't finished it yet. So art. <laughs> art. Really, yeah, I know how us artists are, you know, the mood. I'm, I cut my own hair. That's, oh, it looks great. And that I sing and cut my own hair and I never do them at the same time. And uh, <laughs> I can't cut my hair if I'm not in the mood and I get it. Like it's going to sit there until you're inspired, right? Yeah, yeah, it's getting closer, and um, I feel like, you know, any month now. Any <laughs> <laughs> so the tapestry, I know nothing about gorgeous tapestries. Is that like, um, does it have a special meaning? Uh, well, my, I had a friend that gave it to me, um, but it's from Russia, so it's what? an authentic Russian tapestry. Yeah. Is it velvet? No, it's um, it's cloth. It's like a very soft cotton. Wow, it's so beautiful. I love those colors. It's it's nice. I'm like I I can't have it on the floor, so we need to put it up somewhere. Yeah, it's sometimes tapestries are too beautiful for the floor. They are. So let's get into you because we did this before, but I had lousy equipment. Tell everybody um, who will be watching this in the next week or so, and it'll go on YouTube as well comedian Linda Marcus Smith. Um, okay. Please tell everybody where you grew up, how you got into comedy. Okay. So I grew up here in uh, Las Vegas, um, mostly the Henderson area, Hender Tucky. Woo -woo. Um, <laughs> but I ended up, you know, I've been in, the Neva in Nevada since um, I was seven. So like 1993. And I got into comedy. I mean, I've been a fan of comedy since my teen years. I would spend hours watching stand-up specials just locked away in my room, uh, avoiding sunlight. And <laughs> I fell in love with it. Um, you know, people have always told me that I'm funny. And I, I thought to myself, well, you know, it would be great to do a stand-up set one time before I die because why not you know maybe I can do it maybe I can try it so I decided on my 32nd birthday that I was going to perform and just get it out of the way um, but prior to performing I I've actually been writing jokes for about nine years almost 10 years now um, so I have some jokes that are like 10 years old that they're older than my youngest. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I listened to your comedy set that you sent me. When oh, you thank were you. Performing at a, a, at a, oh, I would call it a large coffee house gathering. Right. Yeah. The bookstore. The bookstore. Is that yeah. here in Vegas? It is. It's uh, the writer's block uh, downtown. I think it's on 6th Street. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry if I got that wrong. <laughs> you, I was so proud of you. And I don't even hardly know you in real life. At, I mean, like we met through Facebook, etc. And I was so proud of you because you hold your own on stage. I mean, like that's what comes across is that you're super funny and you're, you're not giving away any power on stage. You're a strong, independent, female, comic, with something to say and you deliver it and deliver it very well and I was really proud to watch you and to know you this way you touch my heart um really true I can see you going places with this I just I put a lot of effort into it like sure it was 20 minutes up there but I spent months working I spent like two months working on it then I spent days you know rehearsing um 
because I want to give people a good show. When they come, I want to entertain them. I want to make them laugh and I want to introduce a new perspective. So I really like appreciate what you said. You know, that really does touch my heart. Well, good. You know, there's so many times I see comics on stage that don't take full advantage of the stage or their power or their voice or their persona. You are awesome in Thank so many you. ways. I just really, you know, like I've seen top comics do no better. Thanks Seriously, so that's, how, that's how much I felt about your, uh, and I didn't get to say that last time because I was so concerned with the equipment and <laughs> holding a camera and bootlegging. So uh, bootlegging my own stuff, but yeah, you did a great job and the audience loved you. They had a good time. It, it was did. so, it was such a powerful moment because there was just so much electricity there and everybody had a great time. I mean, it was packed. There's people outside and I, I feel very honored to have been able to participate in that. So I don't, is your comedy clean? I didn't look at it from that point of view. It's mostly clean. I might say shit every now and then, but my biggest, uh, I, so we all know that like bodily functions are hilarious, right? And Absolutely. I do what I can to, to challenge myself a little more and to work clean because I feel that that's gonna be the way for me to reach the highest form of the art is to be clean. So I have you, have you met Kathleen Dunbar? I mm, think I have her name right, Kathleen. Yeah, Dunbar. I've heard of her. I've, I'm sure I've seen some of her stand up. I feel like she might have been on Comedy Central. Yeah, she's been around and she she uh, she headlines. She's always looking for clean female comics. Oh, so really? If you've got a 15 or 20 minute set, send it to her. She needs a clean female comics. Wow, thank you so much. Cause uh, yeah, that's that's what I like. That's, uh, yeah. I like to keep it, keep it clean, you know? Because I want, I want to be able to tell my jokes in front of families. I want to be able to tell my jokes in front of my own children. You know, I would hate to be in here practicing and saying all kinds of obscenities and foul you know language and have my child be in the next room like mom what are you doing what is this secret life of yours <laughs> totally a filthy pervert like, <laughs> <laughs> totally totally yeah um kathleen told me to send her a set i don't quite yet have exactly 15 or 20 and it, it's all clean but i haven't put five and five and five together and taken out and added five. I haven't, you've done the work, you go for it. Well, I mean, I, I have a very, uh, you know, those people that don't like to wear the same outfit twice. I'm kind of one of those people. So cool. I'm trying to come up with another 20 minutes so that I could do a fresh, I, I, I have the same people come and support my like open mics and my shows. So because it's always my same friends, I know that they've already heard these jokes. So I'm always under pressure to create something new for them, something that will delight them. I so I'm always, I'm always pushing to make new jokes. That's a and, great, great inspiration. Sometimes when I have the same people coming to hear me, like at, at mics, that happens, you know, <laughs> yeah. I like to put a different punchline on the first joke and the last joke. <laughs> okay. And, right. and then it's just kind of fun to play with them and then look right at them and like, what, you were <laughs> expecting something different, you know? Right. Yeah. I look at some of my older sets because I recorded all of my sets. And yeah, it's funny because I did start out talking very dirty and just being really like filthy. Um, I did this one where I rattled off all the different types of dicks that there are. And boy, did people love that one. I got off the stage and people were like, hey, tell me more, tell me more about the dicks. How many more are there, please? And I'm like, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Oh, that's um, funny. They do like the dirty, you know? They, they love, love the, and it's easy to do. I mean, I have, so, 
there's so many funny dirty jokes that I have that I'm just like well never gonna perform that because I just I, I like hold myself to like the weirdest standards you know and it's just part of I think it's part of being a Leo where we're such perfectionists and we just want to do it do it this way that's so no. cool um it'd be fun to sit with you and workshop ideas on comedy I would love that I would so love it you know I can only take my comedy so far you know because it's me in a vacuum <laughs> it's right like, yeah ugh. And yeah. I want to get to the next level. And the next level is not that difficult for most people, but for me, it is. I mean, you know, everything, everybody faces their own challenges. I know that um, I do have a couple of other girls in the scene um, who Mary Powers and Liz Hyder, uh, we've gotten together respectively and worked on some jokes. Uh, Mary performed at Girls Aren't Funny and she was the opener and her set was killer. Um, wow. and Liz, Liz Hyder performed that night as well. And she did great too. Like Liz is, uh, she's got a real solid joke writing down. So yeah, I would love to have like a powwow with some strong, strong female clowns. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Let's to have a clown posse, clown right? Cl clown car, the whole nine yards. Right. We'll all squeeze in there. We'll all get in there. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So what's the next goal in comedy for you? Um, you know what? So right now I feel like nobody knows what's happening, right? Who knows what's going on right now? Exactly. I mean, are we even going to make it to the end of 2020? Let's mm -hmm. all stay tuned and find <laughs> out. Um, so I guess before the Rona, uh, my big goal was to have another show, another big show with uh, perhaps uh, girls aren't funny part two yes you know and that was the goal um definitely with these uh new measures in place we could not pack a bookstore the way we did um prior so that would be that would be one challenge um I think just right now basically I've been working on finding jokes um it has been hard to find things funny lately I and, agree. And, yeah, it's like, I'm like, is anything funny right now? Is anything funny? Anybody got a joke for me? Um, so I think the next big goal is to have another show, uh, have another show. I definitely want to get another 20, another 20 minutes down. And it's getting to the point where I'm thinking about having open mics at my house. Wow. You know, just to... That? to start practicing because I have enough space. I have a microphone, you know, and I know some comics. So we could sit around and just, um, you know, pat ourselves on the back. Good job, good job, good job. Yeah, that's cool. In your comedy career that, um, how, what, like what's been something really memorable that you'll never forget happened? Um, well, a couple of things. Uh, when I was in high school, I saw George Carlin at the Palms movie theater and I shouted out, George, I love you. And he was like, and he turned around and he saw me and he was like, so I got to profess my love to George Carlin. Good. Good on that. Um, Monique, let me do five minutes at the SLS, which was so incredible. Um, because, you know, we all know that Monique has a mostly black audience. Yes. And we've all heard the stories about black audiences being not very forgiving. Like if you suck, they'll let you know right away. Exactly. Um, Mike Tyson was in the crowd that day as well. So that was like a double bonus, you know, experience, but I got up and I did five minutes. I did not forget my jokes. Uh, the crowd did look a little confused. They were like, who is this person? And, um, but they were, they were laughing, you know, they were laughing, they were enjoying themselves. Uh, one of my jokes, Mike Tyson, like howled, he howled out loud. Do you and, remember that joke? Yeah, I do. It was, um, it was about, it was about dating and being like a masochist in regards to dating um, and just how horrible of an experience it is. And that's what made him laugh was 
dating and just how terrible it is. Um, yeah, that's funny. Cause like I said, I always work on new jokes. So like the jokes that I perform that night, I don't even perform anymore. Cause I, I'm like, oh, I used them twice. They're old now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like underwear. <laughs> 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 Wear it once, turn it inside out, uh, it's over with. Um, but that was just really amazing. It was amazing to, to go in front of an audience that wasn't expecting me, uh, wasn't familiar with me, and be able to get some laughs, get some real laughs from them and, and maybe introduce some concepts that they weren't familiar with. So yeah. that was That's a powerful so cool. moment. I love doing comedy for black audiences. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite videos of me doing comedy was this little club in Portland, Oregon. They went in and, and it's in downtown Portland and they revamped the place. You wouldn't know this gorgeous room is there ultra modern oh my gosh and swing sets at the bar wow okay it's that sounds cool. amazing you go to portland you got to go there and they have an open mic and then they have slam poetry for you know and i did comedy there and i got my best set ever from there Look and then that. one time i did slam poetry there too because mm -hmm. you know i wanted to see if i could try it and I got everybody crying. And then after that, they want, didn't want to hear my comedy. They wanted to hear my poetry. <laughs> They're like, come on, Linda, give us more slam poetry. Don't ever do poetry to the audience if you want them to love your comedy. If you're good at both, they'll never want to hear your comedy again. Look at that. I love it. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to just keep going. I mean, <laughs> what else do we have but our jokes? <laughs> this has been something else. And quite honestly, it's been really, really hard for me to, to even want to write jokes. I, I take my set and I massage it every day like, like it has arthritis, you know, I try to add to it, take away. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not, but I'm really into talking to people and like you give me energy and and, you know, and I feel connected to the world and that's what started all of this. <laughs> I love it. You know, I mean, honestly, some of the jokes are writing themselves right now. Mm -hmm. um, the, the people at CHAZ, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, for those who do not know what CHAZ is, CHAZ is not a guy, it's a place. Um, they ran out of food and they were asking for meat substitutes, please. Soy and meat substitutes. And that just seems so funny to me. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. They're like, we're vegans. We need our, we need our soy substitutes. <laughs> um, I think I'm excited to see what happens. You know, um, I'll definitely, I know astrology really predicted a lot of this. And I have a joke about that, um, which now I'm like, hmm, was that funny? Because here we are. Um, but it's supposed to be kind of chaotic for the next five years. Oh my gosh. I know. Yeah. That's so hard. it's five years is a long time. You know how old I am, right? I'm 69. <laughs> I've yeah. never seen a more messed up world in my life. Never. Well, huh. Seen a lot of crap too. I really, I really hope this is as messed up as it gets. <laughs> Me too. Or we're going to be extinct. <laughs> Uh, you know what? That's that's all right. I'm I'm one of those hippy dippy people that believes in um, transcending, and uh, you know we are we are just a spirit in a human body. So, you know, I'm just I'm just a spirit having a human body. So you're so present in the moment, and so beautiful and young. So, so do you have other aspirations in in addition to doing performing comedy? And of um, course your art, but like well, acting, commercials? Uh, no, I never thought about that actually. I, um, I actually do uh, website copywriting. Um, What's and, that? <laughs> yeah, I take, um, I go onto a person's website and I read their, their, their website and I help them fix it. I help them write the very best content that they can, have because a lot of times 
these websites are terrible, you know? They'll just say the same thing over and over again. We are proven and excellence, customer excellence, customer service. And so I, that's what I do. That's, um, that's my side business is uh, copywriting. Um, Website copywriting. And so can people hire you? They, they can and they, they have and they should if their website sucks. And so um, can they get like a free assessment of how bad they suck? Yeah, yeah, they definitely can. I mean, just today, you know, I was looking over a client's, uh, they, they're not hiring me to write their website. They're hiring me to do articles for their website. Um, and I was looking over it and the content on the website definitely needs some work. So it's very easy to, for me to tell when I, when something needs to be spruced up. That's super cool. So you are a writer at heart. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been writing since I was a child. Uh, I used to win awards in elementary school and I got published when I was 16. I've been published in the Las Vegas Weekly and what? yeah, no, I, I write, I like writing. I've written a couple of short stories. I wrote a short movie, a short, a short screenplay. Um, Is it out there for me to watch? Uh, you know what? It's, it, it used to be on Vine which is non-existent anymore. So now I'm like, where's it at? Yeah. Um, but so I, I do love writing. I do love creating um, stories. I love telling stories. And yeah, and I also, I read the tarot. That's one more thing that I do. Wow, tarot readings for other people. So you, people can hire you to do that. Yeah, it's, um, it's a very interesting uh, craft. Um, it's, it, I've helped a lot of people get in touch with their, with their intuition through it. I've helped people launch their businesses. I've helped people navigate through breakups. So it's been, that's it's, great. Yeah. That's another passion. I, I just, I like a lot of things. That's so cool. So if people want to hire you for network, no website, can't read my writing, copywriting, mm -hmm. and tarot reading. And what else could they get a hold of you? And do they do it through Facebook? They can definitely do it through Facebook. Um, my my copywriting company is called Flux Copy, F L U X C O P Y. And I have a website, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fluxcopy.com. Yes, it is. Okay. Keep easy. And uh, with my tarot, um, I have a website for that, of course, and it's called eternal tarot lv.com. Eternal tarot lv, like Las Vegas.com. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Super. Yeah, keep myself busy. <laughs> How do you keep yourself busy being a stay at home homeschooling mother? Um, it's a lot of checking the clock. I, uh, I check the clock a lot. I plan my days out. I figure out what kinds of tasks need to be done. Um, you know, just recently, and of course, like as a person who does a lot, I am also a big, pro, like, I'm pro taking a break. Um, you know, not to get all mystical, but we recently had um, a full moon, an eclipse, a lot of the planets are in retrograde. So there's been just a collective exhaustion going around. Cool. No wonder I got mad at the Amazon guy. Yeah, no, there's just, it's just everybody's drained. Um, all of these planetary movements have not been easy. And we have another eclipse coming up actually. And it's also on the solstice, I believe. So it's going to be just another powerful day. So June 21st is going to be another powerful day. So like if people are feeling tired, they're feeling exhausted, drained, maybe they're having a lot of uh, thoughts about the past. Maybe a lot of memories are coming back right now. It's all part of the system. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, let me see. Let me see this. This is, uh, this is our in-home celebrity. Oh my gosh. What is her name? He's my cat. Is he? Her he's name. A, 
is FBI agent Dana Scully. <laughs> Who named the kitty cat? I did. <laughs> uh, She's the same age as my daughter. No way. Yeah, they've grown up together. Oh, is, that's, that's so cool. I had a beagle for 15 years. Oh, yeah, that's nice. It's nice to have a pet for a long time. It's unfortunate when they start to, uh, you know, go to the Rainbow Bridge. That's uh, Yeah. Speaking of which, when I took my beagle to the Rainbow Bridge doctor, we left the Rainbow Bridge doctor and a great big hornet, a friendly hornet, came right at me as we were walking out, we got in the car and went down the freeway. And there was no indication of a rainbow. And we drove through a double rainbow, turned around, it was gone. That's beautiful. Yeah. But so that's some, you know, that's a sign for sure. I love those little like announcements from nature that it's like, I see you, I see your life. It's like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I should probably let you go and be mom. And I have to get with you to workshop comedy. Yeah, of course. I mean, I I I actually came up with a joke premise you the did. other day. I was telling, um, so I keep a note, I keep notes um, for anybody who wants to do comedy. Uh, the secret to comedy is writing everything down. Everything you think is funny, you got to write it down. So I actually, um, because I'm on Twitter and I'm on uh, Facebook, I'm on everything. I spend a lot of time on the internet there. I follow a Twitter account that's called daily affirmations and daily affirmations will retweet anything that has the hashtag daily affirmations in it. So the other day I'm scrolling th through my Twitter and I see this post and it's, um, it's a thin spo post. Now, if you haven't fallen into the recesses of Twitter, there is a community that uses the hashtag Thinspo to promote anorexia and bulimia. So this Daily Affirmations bot retweeted a Thinspo post because it had Daily Affirmations in it. And I felt personally attacked. I felt like Twitter said, you know what? You have been eating a lot. Check this hashtag out. All right, maybe, maybe you could use a little thin spoke, girl. <laughs> Are you really gonna have another slice of pizza? That's not that's not very thin so of you. We need <laughs> we need these daily affirmations of you not eating so much. <laughs> so I just feel like that's the first joke that or the first funny idea that I thought of this whole month. Wow, because it's just been rough. It has yes, been. it has been. So now I'm, I don't know, but yeah, write everything down, everybody. You don't, you don't know what joke it's going to be. And you might have to go and start farming from the further recesses of your notepad. Right? Yes, absolutely. Your delight. Do you want to shout out a Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, anything like that in case, um, are you accepting that or are you good? Yeah. Hey, I mean, I'm all, if you want to send me, if you want to send me money to buy a beer, I <laughs> won't, won't turn that down. Um, my Venmo is uh, Chola Punk, C-H-O-L-A-P-U-N-K. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Linda. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having Thank me Thank you, Zola. On. Zola La Loca, everybody here at Comic Spot. We'll oh, get this, all your information posted. And Adam Dominguez will do tech magic and get it up on YouTube. And eventually Spotify will approve me. Okay. Yeah, they will. Yeah, oh, they will. <laughs> yeah, they will. I better. Okay. Thank you so much, Zolo Loca. Of course. Bye. Bye, Linda. Have a great one. You too. Bye. Bye. Everybody's talking.